What's up everyone? This is Cedric Sky Seti and welcome back to another video. And in today's video, I'm going to give you guys five tips on how you can not only survive but thrive your first six months here in Korea. Now, I know that there are many of you guys out there that you're either thinking about moving to Korea or you just got to Korea or you've been in Korea for some time now. So no matter which category you fall into, I think these five tips will definitely help you. Now, I've been in Korea for a little over six months myself, so I know that these tips work. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, the first tip is to take a deep breath and just take it all in. Now, you are in a new country, you're, for many of you guys, on the other side of the world, and so just take a moment and realize that you are in another culture and you're about to experience something very awesome and life-changing. Now, it doesn't matter where you are, just take a moment and just be grateful for the fact that you are doing something that many people don't have the luxury of doing in that you are living in another country, experiencing another culture. Tip number two is to learn the culture. Now after realizing you're in a whole nother country, in a whole nother culture, take this time to learn as much as you can about the culture. Now this can make or break your experience here in Korea. Korea is a country that is full of tradition and customs and there's a lot of culture here. There's a lot of traditional culture and there's a lot of modern culture and a lot of that oftentimes coexists with one another. So take this time to learn as much as you can about the culture, about the people, about the mindsets. And here's a power tip for you. If you learn a little bit of Korean history, you're gonna understand a lot about how Korea thinks and how Korea operates today. One of the things that you have to realize, if you haven't already, is you are in another country. You are not in your home country, you're in another country. And so that means you have to come in respecting the culture and the rules of the culture. Now growing up in grade school, I would go to the house of my friends and whenever I would go into their house, I noticed that the rules were a little different from my house. Say for example, I would go to a certain friend's house and they don't take off their shoes in the house. Is there anything wrong with that? No. Is it something that I'm used to in my own culture and in my own house? No, but the thing was I was able to adapt to the customs of that household and I didn't have to take off my shoes. That's just a very small example, but on a bigger scale, you're in another country, there's different rules, different mindsets, and so take the time to really learn that and it's gonna make your experience a lot better. Now, if you don't take the time to really learn the other culture, there's a couple of things that can happen. Among those, you run the risk of offending the culture that you're in or being offended by that culture. So understanding plays a key role in your experience with that culture. Tip number three is to learn the language. Now, that kind of goes without saying, especially when you're in a country where the mother language is not English, but take the time to learn the language. Now, as with any language and any culture, a big part of understanding the culture and even the people of the culture and the nuances of the culture is through the language. No matter whether you're here for a couple of months, whether you're studying abroad for a semester or you're here for at least a year teaching English, or if you plan to be here for several years, definitely take the time to learn the language, at least the basics. It's gonna help you out a lot. Now, I don't think I need to really go over all of the benefits of learning the language of the country that you're in, but a couple that I'll mention is, one, you really be able to connect with the people in that culture. And obviously you can't really connect with people on a deep level without communication. Being able to communicate with the people here or even simply just being able to get around is gonna make your experience a lot better and it's gonna make the experience of those around you a lot better as well. The great thing about Korea is it's very English friendly, but you gotta realize that English is not the primary language. If you really wanna connect with people or get by or not struggle while you're here, take the time to really learn the language it's also going to open up way more opportunities for you, whether it's in relationships or jobs, whatever the case is, take the time to learn the language and you'll be able to see what a difference it makes. Now, as far as learning the languages, I've got a couple of power tips for you. The first power tip is language exchange. What is language exchange? It's basically a social gathering, whether it's in a coffee shop or a bar, wherever it is, and it's a group of foreigners and also native Koreans that are gathering together to meet one another and to also exchange languages. And so this is a good way to not only go out and find someone who speaks 
speaks the language that you want to learn, but it's also a good way to find friends. So that's a power tip for you. Another power tip is an app that many of us have heard of and it's called Hello Talk. Hello Talk is such a great app because it's basically like an online language exchange. You get to chat with people online and connect with people online who want to learn the language that you're strong in and vice versa. And you get to not only practice online, but if you're comfortable enough, you can actually meet in person. The fourth tip is community. Now, community is huge, and this is another thing that I feel like could make or break your experience here in Korea. So I definitely encourage you to find your community here. Now, this is twofold in my opinion. Now, you're in a whole new country, and you probably can't really get around just yet, or you're adjusting to the language. Community is very important. Having a community of people who speak your language is also important, so there's plenty of foreigners in and around Korea that you can connect with. So I think it's a great idea for you to befriend some foreigners that are here and just have a, a tight-knit group of people that you can trust and that you can connect with in your own native tongue and then that way you can share your experiences here in Korea together. Now the other aspect of community is finding a Korean community here. Now this is a challenging part for a lot of foreigners. It may be intimidating but it's not as hard as you might think. Why would you want to find a a Korean community here because you want to experience the culture, because you want to get better at the language. And so finding a Korean community here will not only allow you to do that, but you'll be able to connect with the locals here, which will in turn help you have a better experience. So I encourage you, get out of your comfort zone and connect with some local Koreans here. Again, you can do that through what I mentioned in the last tip, through Hello Talk, Language Exchange, or even just going out, chilling at the bar, whatever the case is. The fifth, and final tip is this, don't be a hermit. In Korea, there are tons of things to do, tons of places to explore, and a lot of experiences to be had. So as you're adjusting to this country, and as you're still seeking to develop your community and developing your relationships here, put yourself out there. See what Korea has to offer and see what you can get into. Now, even though Korea is considered to be one of the most homogeneous places in the world, it's still pretty foreigner friendly. And so there's always gonna be things to do and things that you can get into here in Korea. So I encourage you to definitely go check it out. Now during my time here, like I said, I've been here for about six months, a little over six months. I've been able to check out different festivals. I've been able to go to several concerts. I've also been able to take part in a Spartan race. I mean, it's crazy. There were tons of things for me to do and I'm pretty busy as it is, but I'm still able to find things to do that fits my schedule. And Korea is still a small enough country to where you could travel around to experience these festivals or concerts or whatever all within the same day so definitely put yourself out there check out what Korea has to offer and that's going to make your experience so much better so go out there and make it happen all right everyone that's it five tips on how to thrive in your first six months here in Korea or however long you've been here or however long you're staying so I hope you guys enjoyed those five tips and I really hope that you found value in today's video if you found this video Video helpful or insightful definitely let me know in the comments below also let me know if you want to see more videos or topics like this hit that like button smash that subscribe button and share this video as well all right guys thank you for watching I'll see you guys in the next video and remember to always seize the day